Hey everyone, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. In this video, in our source control series, going to talk about some, some of the extra uh, tasks that you do with source control, some of the things that, that, are, that are outside of the main process. And uh, gonna compare the different source control providers so that you can see that a lot of this stuff is, it's really the same types of things that you're going to do. Um, but I also want to let you know that you, you probably don't want to stress yourself out about all of these things because as I've mentioned before, a lot of things, these things are rarely used or sometimes never used. Um, it it kind of depends on how you work and, and, and what happens as, as you are dealing with your Flare project and source control. So I want to begin by just showing you uh, this one comparison image. So what I did here is I put, uh, for all the different providers, I put these extra tasks sort of side by side. And this is not an exhaustive list that all of these providers can do. You know, this isn't all they can do. These are the things that you're gonna find in Flare that, that uh, these different systems are able to do. All right, so over up in the upper left is Git and Central, because Central is using Git. And you're, you'll notice the colors in here. So everything that is in yellow, these are things that are the same in with all four providers. And that is the majority of this stuff. Stuff that's in blue is are things that some providers share with others, but they don't necessarily all have. And then the stuff in white is unique to that provider. So let's sort of begin over here up in the upper left with uh, Git and Central, and you look at branching. Now, I have mentioned before that these other providers, they all really have their own system of branching. But the reason why this is in white is because uh, branching is only supported in Flare, in the interface for Git and Central. So uh, yeah, so you're not going, so the, the branching UI, you're not going to see it if you're bound to one of these other three. Now, working our way down, publish to source control. This is something that I also talked about early on in this series, and it really doesn't have to do with the uh, source files, with, with uh, source control. It has to do with your output files, the ability to publish them using a destination file to source control from a project. So they, you can do this with all of these. Um, but I'm not going to go into that. If you want to look more into, look into that more. Um, I do have, you know, this this is this is all documented. So there are different reasons why people might want to publish their output, get it into a source control solution. They all do this. Revert modified files. Revert is it's sort of like a fancy undo. A lot of these things that you're seeing on the in this uh, in this graphic, these are things that I noticed are either. The, the things that are shared between all of these products are um, either a whoopsie daisies kind of thing, like I screwed up and I need to, you know, undo something, fix something, or it is there. They are tasks that are designed to avoid conflicts, to avoid problems. That's really what most of these things are. So revert modified files. We're going to look at this. I'll actually do this one here in, in a moment after I get through all this. So you've gone through and you've made some changes and then you go, oh, no, 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 I want to I want to back out of that. Rolling back to an earlier version of a file that's sort of similar and they all do this. Um, you can go back and say, no, nope, this file, I want to go back to this, this point in time. Um, view differences. So you can uh, have a file up and you, you can tell Flare, uh, show me the differences between what I have locally and what's up on the server. And I'll show you. View history. Uh, so there might be times when you just want to look at the, with, at the history for a file, all the changes that have been made over time for a file or for an entire branch, which is, those are going to be the next videos I get to. And I'll do that once in a while. I will look at the history for different reasons, but um, actually, a lot of times it's it's when I'm doing testing um, to document something. So it's not like I'm in there all the time. Uh, I a revert. I actually I did that actually a week or two ago when something got messed up. But I don't do that that often. So it's not like I'm doing a lot of these things. 
very often branching is the one thing up here that I rely on heavily that I'm I am doing all the time. Going over here to per Perforce Helix Core, uh, already went through all the yellow stuff. Look at the blue stuff. Locking and unlocking a file. This is something it has in common with Subversion. So this is the idea that you are putting a lock on a file. It's not preventing another user from making changes to that file locally, wherever they are, but it is preventing them from you know, committing that to the, the, the remote location. So it's one of these preventative types of things. So if I were using Perforce or Subversion, I very likely would be, I probably would be using that. Uh, undeleting files. So, all right, I deleted a file, changed my mind, undelete. View files that are checked out. So this would be very helpful for these things, uh, Perforce TFS, where you are checking things out. They both have they both have undeleting files and they both have view files that are checked out. So <clears throat> it's sort of like, again, you go to a library and somebody checks out a book and, and you, is if you can get the person behind the counter to tell you, hey, who has that book checked out? Uh, maybe they will, maybe they won't tell you. So in Flare, you can look at who has files checked out that uh, maybe you wanna work on. And then TFS has this, unique one for undoing a checkout. Checked it out, changed my mind, undo the checkout. So you can see there's so many, there are so many similarities in here. And uh, you might discover that you are using some of these sometimes, sometimes never. Let's go and just let's look at uh, one or two of these in the project uh, I was working on. Okay, so this is that project that we were using in the last video where this is the first writer. I had a first writer and a second writer. And I've got this topic open, first knowledge check. And maybe I want to look at the history for it. What, what has happened? So source control, I can just come up here to view history and it's going to break it down for me. And you can see the comments in here. So that's this is why comments can be very, very helpful. And you can see what happened when you know, this file was added at this time. It was modified by this person. And uh, and this is the comment. And then this person made a change on this, uh, you know, at this time. And this is their comment. So you can, you know, you can use that. You can get the selected version. Um, you know, different things you might want to do. I actually don't often, I, I don't know if I ever use this. The time when I see the, the time when I'm looking at differences between things is when I hit conflicts, which is a later ver uh, video in this series. So it's not like I, you know, am constantly going through using all these buttons. I'm using things as I need them. And so if a conflict happens, another writer has made a change to the same place in the same file, and I need to see the differences. I need to compare those so I can make a decision what's going to be used. That's when I do it. So uh, that isn't something that I, I necessarily would you know, use a lot, but you might. Now reverting. All right, so you can see there is a revert option here. There's a revert all uh, to revert all files to the last known state. Or uh, what I might do uh, is go into the history for the branch. Can't wait to get to the branching videos. So you can see this is the entire history of all the stuff that I made between the two writers here uh, in, that, in that last video. And this right here changes for writer uh, one for demo. So there were several changes in there. And you can see that this, this, this comment is, you know, not real descriptive. So this is why I, I, I say make make the make the comments as descriptive as you can, so that you can remember. Oh, when did I when did I delete that one file or or whatever? And if you decide, hey, uh, I really don't want any of these changes from that commit in there, you can do a revert here. So let's do that, and it is going to now it breaks it down. It says, all right, so that actually is, it says I renamed that file. That's just their way of, you know, explaining what I did, which I actually deleted that file, modified these two. So it's going to back out all these changes. And I'm going to say, yep, accept that thing. And it's 
doing its work. It's going through, it's doing its fancy undo. Revert was successful. Now you can see, all right, I don't, I'm not seeing the changes from that whole commit in there. I'm seeing this one from that second writer because that was part of a different commit. This topic is now back in here. And what actually happened here is it, it not only, it didn't just back it out, it created a new commit to do this because other writers on your team may have already done a, a poll and they have these changes and time, a little bit of time's gone by. And in order to get this backed out from all the writers, you need to commit this thing. I'm gonna click this five, the number five down there. And those are the files that are affected. And I'm just gonna say, I uh, just revert these changes. I'm just gonna put that in there. And uh, so I don't wanna click revert here again. I wanna commit this change. This is the revert, you know, the, I'm, I'm undoing all this stuff. So I'm gonna commit this. And it did it. And once I click in there, you can see the number changed there. Now I'm gonna do a sync. And it is going to pull and push. So that other writer, the second writer, has all those changes that had been made. And now we're gonna get out of it. As soon as that person does a pull, that commit is gonna be applied. All right, so that's done. Everything's groovy there. Let's go to this other writer. And you can see, yeah, there's the change from writer one. That's one of the old things. Nothing's showing up in Source Control Explorer because they haven't done anything. And this is why you do a poll. So let's do this. And we're going to get that commit, that reversion, that revert commit. It's going to come down here and it's going to undo these changes. There it is. Undid that, and I should see this file back that had been deleted before. So that's just one use of uh, one thing that's sort of outside of the mainstream, one of the things that you might need to do from time to time. Now, there are uh, a few other tasks that you might do even outside of Flare, um, because as I've mentioned, Flare is going to give you, it gives you a whole bunch of stuff, some of the main things that you do, but there could be something with your provider that can be done. It's just that Flare doesn't have that yet. And I did uh, say that I not only have, I'm using Flare here, but I'll use Visual Studio. That just happens to be a tool that I've used for a long time. And I'm going to open this up and you can see even if you're not familiar with the you know, Visual Studio interface, you can see over here on the right, um, this is my project that I've, I've bound. And so you can see, so master, if you, don't, if, you're, if you haven't created any branches, you're always, it's always master. And so I've, I haven't created any yet because I haven't gotten to the branches videos. So I've got master here and that's local. And then this is remote and it's telling me what's my remote. Well, it's Madcap Central. There's my master branch there. And I can go and if I had been making changes to things, they would populate here just as they did in Flare, right? One of the things that I might need to do in a Visual Studio that I can't do in Flare, if I right click on this, you can see some other options in here. There's that fetch I was talking about before. You don't get that in Flare. Another thing is cherry pick. So cherry pick is this way. It's also this real fancy undo. It's if you maybe made changes to the wrong branch and then you wanna apply them to a different branch, you can cherry pick, pick the things that you want to you know, do that for, the changes that you wanna do that for. Um, a lot of people say well, that's a really bad thing to do because it can it can screw things up and screw up your history. I've actually only ever done that once, but I had to do it here in Visual Studio, couldn't do it in Flare because Flare doesn't have that. So it's just an FYI that if you wanna do something real advanced, real obscure, that's just not in Flare, you can do it in another system where I could, could have done it in, um, in Git Bash in the command line. Just an FYI. Now, one final thing before I go. Uh, a few years ago, I spoke, I think it was at Mad World, and I, 
I kind of talked about some of this stuff. And one of the things that I wanted to do was provide people with a document that I actually use internally from our documentation Bible. That's what I call it, the documentation Bible. And it breaks down all of the things we do with source control. So both the daily processes, because there, there are things that I, I would want you know anyone to do daily. This, you do this, you do this, you do this. It breaks down all the branching, which I'm going to get to, breaks down all of this, the, the extra things that we might want it to do, but outside of the mainstream revert or cherry pick or something like that. So I will document, I documented this stuff in this uh, PDF and I'll actually put the link next to me. And so again, this isn't, this is just, it's an internal document that we use, but I wanted to make it available to other people so they can see how somebody else in real life is using source control. So I thought I would just provide that link here. If you want to use it, great. If you don't, you don't need to. Um, a lot of the, you know, things are documented in the online help. Things are talked about in the video. This just kind of gets more and more into detail than I'm able to here. All right, so that is going to do it for this video. Obviously, I didn't cover everything in the world that you can do for all of these different providers. I just, I just kind of want to give, give you a hint of some of the things that you can do and give you a little demo of, of one or two of those things. Now, we're going to move into the next videos in this series, and we're going to tackle branching, which is a big subject, and that's why we've got multiple videos on it. So we will see you there in the next videos.